Hello and welcome to a video. This time we're going to talk about CT.js, the game engine. Now this is a, a light 2D um, game engine that uses JavaScript, which is a very powerful language. But the reason I'm talking about this game engine is because it's had some recent um, huge updates and it's extremely uh, powerful for people who don't really like code or who, well, just don't really enjoy the process of coding well this game engine is perfect for you people out there because it's extremely beginner friendly and it's incredibly powerful so with the brand new version uh, 3.01 uh, over here with a few fixes from the, the free update we have a bunch of things to talk about so I'm gonna give a general overview of this game engine in this video uh, for people who've never heard of it or just want to see what it's like so over here we have uh, our startup page. As soon as you launch the program, this is what you can have. Your latest projects and examples as well as your uh, a template, a default template that comes with, um, with ct.js. So let's go down here and create a new project. We'll call this one test and select folder and save in my directory. So here we have a panel that pops up and says, what do you want to do? Do you want to... Um, follow this tutorial, this one, this one, or just skip. We can skip, but you can just as easily do these tutorials. They're very, very well made. They're visually um, appealing. They're very uh, uh, good at communicating the information. And learning how to use this game engine is probably going to be easier than any other game engine out there because it's very simple. Let's go over here to the um, this this panel over here you can see we have a bunch of options and the first one we're going to talk about is the actual cat mods because I think this is really the, the power the powerhouse of uh, ct.js you can see we have a bunch of options uh, a bunch of categories up here and all these are, are modules and a lot of them come pre-enabled well not a lot but a handful here you got the ct.fit um, fit to screen which allows you to have your device auto fit to any aspect ratio, uh, your game to fit to any aspect ratio or resolution on any device, which is great. You got your keyboard, you got C.place, which is a collisions module. This uh, it, it gives uh, you the ability to code in uh, mouse clicks and touches on on tablets and stuff like that. And you just have a bunch of different modules available, and all these are essentially features that uh, you might not need or you might need. For example, uh, randoms. Uh, you might not need to, to, to pick random values and stuff like that. Or you might not need to have a light system. But they're all features that are available for you. And the reason it's so powerful is that it doesn't clutter your interface. All these are hidden over here in the cat mods. So when you're making your game, you don't have all these features cluttering your view. So you can just focus on what you actually need. And also, all, none of these will be packaged with your actual game or even with the engine. None of them will be visible in the engine. These features won't appear unless you activate them. And I think this it's a small thing, but it's very powerful because optimization is key when making web games. And if you go over here, you can see the primary function is uh, to make games in JavaScript to export to the web. However, you have possibilities to export to desktop and Android. So uh, as you can see, we have, um, well, over here in our project settings, we have a bunch of options, many, many features, but that's just scratching the surface. Let's go ahead and create a, a texture so we can actually start making a sort of game. So over here, we have multiple possibilities. I have to import a, a local asset or add, uh, go into our gallery. And over here, we have a bunch of CC0 assets that we can use. So if you want maybe... Uh, placeholder game objects or just game objects if you're making a game jam this can be really useful or if you want a UI element then you can download them individually whichever one you want or just import an entire package here but what's even more powerful is that if you have something on the internet and you copy the image you can just click this button and it'll paste it in directly so no need to download and re-import uh, with this you can just copy it off the internet press that and it'll paste it in which is very powerful, but one last one we have here to generate assets is what an asset generator right here. We have the possibility to generate placeholder assets. So we have the resolution, the height and um, width and height. We have the color that we can modify, maybe a, a light red. Uh, let's set it to be a round a shape and uh, add a text, maybe red or just no, no text. Or we can add a cross, no, just no text. 
and we can create an asset and there we go now we have a texture imported which is pretty cool so when we click on this it will bring up this sort of uh, menu area so what we want to do is center the origin of our image so image is center there we go easy peasy circle collision shape and now we have a circle collision shape around our object although uh, one thing to note is that this is not actually a, a, a game object yet you can't actually place this object in your in your rooms in your worlds uh, let's create a new world let's change the background to something more blue like a sky and what if we look here we we don't actually have anything to place in our world we don't have any tile set we don't have a background we don't even have well we have nothing because game objects in ct.js are called templates these are objects that you can put inside your rooms inside your worlds but right now there's nothing here so let's go ahead and and uh, click on our player uh, with right click and create a template from it and over here you can see it's brought up this this uh, this area here and as you can see we switched over to the template area as you can see so uh, over here we have a bunch of appearance options collision group which essentially is uh, the equivalent of tags in unity or or anything like that and over here we have the possibility to add code however it's uh, much more simpler than you might think it's not like other game engines because here we have an event uh, we can add events, for example, on creation, which is as soon as the object is created. In our case, it will be as soon as the game opens. Uh, we have on destroyed. We have things for when the object is pressed or when it's clicked or when the mouse is just clicked. Uh, things about animations. You've got timers. You've got collisions, a uh, collision event. So instead of having to write out these events and then what happens, these events are already uh, mapped out. So, for example, if I if I click on the object we can just write our code instead of saying look to see if object clicks then do something here we just do the then we're just writing what we want to do for example if we go into uh, oh yeah this sidebar I forgot to explain <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself so this sidebar here is your entire documentation you got your project notes your global notes which show up on your entire game engine uh, the, the, it doesn't matter what project you're in, in the entire engine they're going to show up. So we can go into learn and here we have those three tutorials, the Flappy Bird game, the platformer and the space shooter that you can follow uh, by just clicking them. And you can see it's it's well, the screenshots and it's well explained with arrows and stuff like that. But if we go to the documentation you can see down here we have uh, everything to do with the core library so all the CT uh, sort of uh, modules or actions or features I'd say uh, they're, they're, they're all shortened to make it as friendly as possible because most of the features they only are a couple of words like a line and with this new system in place you can see we have an on click event it avoids us from writing things like if action press dot down equals uh, uh, true then do this instead of writing all that all you need to do is just write that one line because this action here if action pressed corresponds to if action pressed and just select your action and uh, let me just talk about actions for a second over here we have our actions and input so if you want to do this and add an action here for example mouse down or tapped then uh, you can just add your new action from scratch for example mouse down so if you call this action uh, for example hit or press or whatever and then we can add an, um, uh, a key to bind it to so for example space key there we go or maybe W key or the up arrow maybe uh, page up so we have all these different keys that are bound to one action so when we say if this is triggered then it can be any of these keys uh, which is great if you have uh, keyboards with different languages so you can uh, add like different uh, buttons to it and have a single action so it avoids you from coding a bunch of stuff that you don't need and then over here uh, the action is going to be the hit that we just made apply and so that means as soon as one of these um, keyboards are press, uh, keyboard buttons are pressed uh, then you're going to do whatever action you put here and when we're talking about actions we can uh, for example 
look at the CT copy uh, properties. For example, we have the, obviously the position in the X and Y, which is obvious because it's a 2D game engine. But we also have movement and speed and direction and gravity. Uh, that's all inside every single copy. So, for example, if I go here and press this dot gravity equals one, then oh, actually that's a bit high. Probably set it to oh, zero point one. So this dot gravity means if the object is in this, you can see if I hide, if I hover over it, it gives me in, um, documentation. Uh, this equals the copy. The copy is a template, so it's this. This is this, if you didn't get it. The player object. And gravity is, well, I think we all know what gravity is, but it still gives us documentation. And obviously the value is the speed of gravity. So over here in our rooms, we can add our object, our player object that we created. For example, up here, we can save that. We can save and uh, we can launch this. And there we go. Now we have our object. And like uh, like I wrote uh, in our code, in our very short code, if I press any uh, keybind that relates to the hit, then it's going to add gravity. And there we go. I press space and gravity went. So you can see it's very easy to code because, uh, well, I mean, you just add the event and one line of code and you have uh, something working. And what's really important to, to know is that everything you need is all here. You don't even need to write anything. You can just copy and paste whatever you want. You want to switch the room? Uh, CTrooms.switch. Uh, there we go. Uh, you want to, I don't know, add a timer? Well, we, <laughs> we have timer events down here. Uh, you want to, I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, maybe add an impulse or move the player up or add an emitter or... Literally anything you want to do, it's all here. Move the camera. Um, hold on. Add the uh, movement directions maybe. So when we click it, uh, this dot speed equals one. This dot direction equals zero. And if you look at our cheat sheets over here, um, over here you can see, uh, you probably can't see that, but zero is in degrees in the map is uh, horizontal uh, to the right. So well, our player will start moving to the right when we click it. There we go. And now when we press space, it falls to the ground. Pretty cool. And that's with two lines of code. One is just the direction and speed, and the other one is the gravity. So you can see uh, it's very easy to do anything in this game engine, really. And uh, over here, this dot move is is just to add movement to the player. So when we start moving it with speed, it allows it to move. You just don't delete it. You don't really need to modify it ever. So just leave that as it is. And there we go. Now we have our game object, and we can create multiple objects. And the game engine is is very it's very easy to understand and grasp because it's just all the different tabs are all different workspaces and different tasks so it's it's very powerful uh, for making web games because it's very fast it's very lightweight and it's very easy to use very beginner friendly so if you wanna make a, a, a mock-up game or for game jam then it's the perfect game engine for you and I am saying for game jam uh, for a specific reason and that reason is that there is actually a CT.js game jam I figured it would be interesting if you want to start using this game engine or at least test it out to see if you would enjoy making 2D uh, web games then you know there's a, a game jam that's going to start in a week there's not many people it was just announced and uh, well obviously we don't know the theme or anything yet but uh, you can start making your game and I think it's the best time to, to start doing it. Uh, when it comes to actually supporting the game engine because it's a single developer uh, it's it's a bit hard, I'm going to say, so I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can donate to them. The only trouble is PayPal and, and Patreon and all that stuff doesn't really work because he's Russian. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy going on with, with Russia nowadays, so a lot of, a lot of companies have stopped 
um, they're working over there, like, uh, like Patreon does not work anymore. So if you want to support him, then just go ahead, click the link in the description and, and give him uh, whatever you feel like the game engine is worth because he's making it completely for free. Uh, he made it, uh, especially for foreigners first, he made it like um, open internationally available. So, you know, I, I, I want to support him and I hope you would too once you start using it. So thanks for watching and check back here uh, if you want more uh, tutorials in the future. I don't actually have any tutorials. This is just an introduction, uh, but I'm planning on doing so and um, I'll see you in the future, maybe.